Hello everyone, and welcome to our very first episode of Brick and Mortar with Shanice. Tonight, we have a guest who's making waves in the wonderful world of commercial real estate. He's not just filling spaces, he's transforming them into thriving hubs of creativity and innovation. Joining us is a visionary entrepreneur, the co-founder of Zero Empty Spaces, the man who's turning vacant buildings into vibrant spaces where artists can thrive. Please help me in welcoming Evan Snow. Hi, Evan. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having us. Of course. So you're the co-founder of Zero Empty Spaces. Can you tell me a little about what that is and what Zero Empty Spaces does? Sure. So uh, my business partner and myself are arts advocates, community builders, creative entrepreneurs, and placemakers that came up with an initiative to solve a problem. Uh, We had a lot of artists that were coming to us asking us where our studio space is at for them to create in, uh, let alone affordable, in a safe, uh, you know, ideally a retail type of environment or in some type of commercial real estate environment, uh, somewhere that they could be outside their home. And then simultaneously, we were having developers, brokers, property managers, and the like asking us to do art in their commercial space So uh, as a solutions agency under our company, the Unitas Group, we put our thinking caps on and came up with this initiative to activate vacant commercial real estate spaces to create affordable working artist studios. So artists have space to create and collaborate affordably outside their homes. It's led to a myriad of win-win benefits for all parties involved uh, over the last four years, 30 spaces now in three states with over 500 artists having come through the program. That's amazing. Can you tell me about your story and what drove you to create Zero Empty Spaces? Sure. I was heavily uh, inspired and influenced by the early stages of Wynwood, which is the industrial warehouse district of Miami. That was never anything when I was growing up. But um, thanks to Tony Goldman, Mushamana, and some other developers that started going to these warehouses where artists were making their painting studios and then collecting them and engaging them and patronizing them and supporting them and filling all of the walls of this arts, soon to be arts district with murals. Uh, It created an amazing placemaking initiative that contributed to making Wynwood, uh, Miami, just 35 minutes to the south of me, one of the cultural meccas for art in North America and arguably the world. I started going there uh, back in the day when it was still underground and on the way up, and it was very inspirational for me. I couldn't get enough of it. I never passed an opportunity to go to Wynwood, and then effectively, I wanted to bring that back to my native home community of Broward County, where Fort Lauderdale and Hollywood's located, just 30 minutes to the north. And we didn't really have so much going on with the arts and culture. We had a budding seed um, and there wasn't really anybody covering the arts and culture so much as arts writing, unfortunately, continues to get cut. So I initially started a social movement called Choose 954, which is the area code for Broward County, to cultivate culture and community, to keep people in the know with all the great things that are going on, to make our community a better place to live, not just a better place to vacation. And then that led the way to me, fortunately, meeting my soon-to-be business partner. And we initially identified there was a gap and void of things that were missing within the arts in our community. And the one thing that was really missing was we didn't have a signature art event uh, like an art Basel. So we didn't want to do what everybody else did inside of a tent, a convention center, or hotel. So we put our thinking caps on and came up with Art Fort Lauderdale, the first art fair on the water that takes place exclusively inside of luxury waterfront homes that are for sale, made only accessible via boat. And since we got involved with the real estate brokers and the real estate board, that inevitably helped pave the way for the creation of Zero Empty Spaces, which takes up the majority of our time now. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you have a couple of other art-based businesses. Is art a passion you've always had? Art uh, was not. I did not grow up in in the arts, admittedly. Uh, I really only got into the arts, fortunately, going to Wynwood 
in 2013, 2014, 2015, as I recently outlined in my first book called Learning to Choose, where fortunately I made some choices outside of my comfort zone that ultimately helped me unlock my hidden potential to change my life, my community, the world, the art world, and beyond. And it really all started with just going to Wynwood for the first time by myself during Miami Art Week and Art Basel in 2014. And uh, I just really fell in love. That's when I started immersing myself in the arts. And if it wasn't for that choice to go by myself without having a friend to go with, and then really continuing to go and, and nurture and cultivate that love for the arts, uh, I might not be sitting here talking to you today, but it was not always in my life. It really only came on uh, when I was about 28 years old. So I like to tell people and inspire people that, you know, anybody could do anything, pursue any passion that they have at any stage of their life and any stage of the game. Yeah. Can you explain the process for artists to become tenants in one of your studios, like including the rental rates and the available sizes of your studio spaces? Sure. So we take large, vacant commercial real estate spaces, primarily retail. We are uh, getting into some office spaces. We've done a few now. And essentially, we break them up into smaller bite-sized spaces. So in, let's just call it a 3,000 square foot space on average, we might have space for 10 artists. Uh, of course, we have to leave room for the walkway, the bathroom, the closet, and so on and so forth. So generally, on average, we make spaces 8 by 12, 8 feet by 12 feet, 96 square feet on average. In Florida and in Virginia, the spaces start at $2.50 per square foot on a month-to-month -month basis with the water and the electric included. Uh, we make it super easy that essentially all an artist has to do is apply. Um, we obviously review their application. We're not overly critical. We don't overly jury. We want to make sure that the artist has a practice, something that they're working on, even if it's not established. Um, and then essentially they can apply, pay uh, one month security deposit and, you know, the first month's rent prorated, and then they'll be able to show up and paint. Um, so we try to make it as easy as possible. We pride ourselves on pairing emerging mid-career and established artists in spaces because it's so tough for any emerging or even mid-career artists really to get a space in one of the traditional residencies or art programs generally have to have a long CV, you generally have to have an MFA, a master's in fine art, or be mm -hmm. part of the cool kids club. And we don't prescribe to that model. We feel art and art spaces and opportunities should be available to all artists. So we kind of flip that model on its head by making things more inclusive. And that's kind of added to the novelty of our program and um, some of the really cool success stories, collaborations, and um, social interactions and experiments that have come through the program. Yeah. So hypothetically, I'm a landlord with an empty space. Why would I want your team to come in for free? It's a great question. So we provide uh, a myriad of win-win-win benefits. Obviously, for the artists, it's the opportunity of a lifetime, discounted rent, so on and so forth. Community gets the opportunity to discover artists in places they've never discovered them. But for the landlords, um, well, Closed doors don't generate positive press. They don't generate any positive buzz. We assume all the liability for the space. So we provide our own insurance. We take the utilities off the property owner's P&L. So they are paying it, even if it's vacant. We take care of those. So they save money there. Uh, we guarantee the space will be open and activated daily. So there's some positive activity, traffic, buzz to support the walkability of the property or shopping center, wherever it may be supports the neighboring tenants. Um, you really couldn't pay a PR firm enough money to generate a positive press story about a closed door or a underutilized, under lease shopping center. Um, and we provide press stories and the press has been fortunately very generous to us in their coverage um, through the novelty of this activation and, and type of use. And then we also provide Matterport virtual reality walkthroughs of the space, which generally costs, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars, depending on the size. We include that. Uh, we don't require any uh, TI. We don't require any build out assistance. We don't require any funding. 
Um, all we ask for is that we are provided the space uh, on a zero dollar month to month lease or at least a significantly discounted rate lease um, generally on a month to month basis until a permanent lease and a permanent tenant is secured, at which point all we ask for is a 30 day notice to vacate uh, so we could you know, try to move the artist to the next available space. That part is fully transparent. The artists, the landlord, the public know at some point this opportunity of a lifetime will come to a close uh, once a permanent lease is secured. But we found through the first 30 spaces we've activated, 22 of which have been successfully leased a lot quicker than they probably would have if they were just vacant on their own. Um, it has supported leasing activity. It supported the buzz, social media content, press content, helps with SEO. We put places on the map. Uh, on, we're very highly ranked on Google Maps as a result of all of that activity. So it works for some. It doesn't work for all. We like to say if it works for Simon and Brookfield and JLL and you know some of the bigger players, then it probably could work for anybody. But we can only do it with the people that see the value in the program that want to get the, the benefits of the activation. And those are the, you know, property owners and developers that we're going to continue working with. Yeah, that sounds like a great deal, honestly. I think so. <laughs> yeah. What are the key elements that would make these transformations successful from commercial property to studio space? Uh, ideally, I well, fundamentally, the space has to be a vanilla box or, you know, at least in some type of uh, operatable condition, you know, we'll bring a space up to code to a certain extent, but we can't add an ADA bathroom. Um, you know, we can't do, you know, extensive electrical work. We'll, you know, fix up the panel if we have to. We'll add some um, outlets and, you know, fire exit sign, fire extinguisher, stuff like that. Um, and ideally, we need, you know, working uh, HVAC and air conditioning. But the um, a lot of people ask us about like the location, you know, does it have to be on main and main? And it really doesn't. Um, some of our best spaces, some of our best success stories have come from what people in the, in the industry and in, in commercial real estate might consider to be underperforming or, you know, under lease shopping centers. Um, we have two cases that you would look at them on the onset, on the surface level and say, you know, that's not going to work. Uh, traditionally speaking, both of those uh, locations are essentially down the street or across the street from two of the top five malls in the state and probably even the country, one of them being the Aventura Mall. And as a result, those shopping centers are under leased and, you know, underutilized to a certain extent. Um, so, based off of the novelty of the concept, the activation, the press, the buzz, uh, the activity, it has proven to be successful for driving traffic, uh, for retaining shopping uh, for retaining shoppers in the shopping center longer, keeping feet in the street, supporting the walkability of the center, supporting the neighboring tenants. So uh, of course we'd love to be, you know, every location where we started initially was on Las Olas. We'd love to be on those main street intersections, but that's not always going to be the case. So ideally just a working space, working um, HVAC, especially in Florida, you know, you need air conditioning. Um, yeah. Those are really the, I guess, the key characteristics and fundamentals. And, uh, you know, ultimately just a landlord that sees the, the vision and the value of what we provide. Um, like I said, we, can't force anybody to do this. We have to do it with people that want to do it, that get it. And, you know, their vacant space isn't doing anybody any good. So putting us in there for vacancy management, if nothing else, we're able to help mitigate, you know, leaks and other potential issues that if the property manager goes on the first of the month to check the space monthly or quarterly, and they don't go back for another month or another quarter, Let's just say the leak happened the next day. We're at least in there to help kind of mitigate those issues. So those are some of the fundamentals and some of the best practices and things that we like to share with, you know, folks in the commercial real estate space to help them get the, the value and the benefit of the program. Yeah. So supporting emerging artists is a core aspect of your mission. Could you share some examples of how you guys have helped artists transition from emerging to maybe established stages of their careers? 
Sure. Our first location, pretty much the first artist that we put in there, she was a uh, very successful senior level investment banker with one of the largest uh, companies in Broward County. She had been painting on the side, uh, started a family and uh, had children and was not exactly pursuing art at the level that she would have liked to or could have. The opportunity became available uh, for her to further dive into her practice and her career um, in this once of a lifetime opportunity to be on Las Olas, which is our you know main street or high street in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Being in there in that location with um, half a dozen other established artists, um, some of which being very established within certain mediums, um, gave her a lot of exposure to different practices, different skill sets, different techniques, different supplies. But the one story with this uh, artist, whose name is Rosanna Collis, uh, she had an opportunity to paint a mural at a local school. And uh, painting a mural is different than painting a canvas. Painting a mural is like painting a wall. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to buff the wall and prime the wall, and it, it's a different process. Traditionally, artists use spray paint versus versus a you know paintbrush and and uh, you know acrylic paint. So, fortunately, in that instance, uh, she was able to turn to her studio mate uh, Serge Il Serge, who's one of the most established street artists, mural artists, uh, artist for the Miami Dolphins. He was the artist in the Super Bowl music video with Pitbull. And turn to him and say, hey, I have this opportunity to paint a mural. I haven't done a mural before. Can you help me out with that? And her being very emerging, especially in the, in the mural world, per se, uh, although she had been painting for a little bit, that gave her a huge leg up and, and helped propel her. And now she's doing murals as interior design for major restaurants in South Florida, Boca Raton, uh, gyms. She's doing, uh, she had an Art Basel exhibit last year on Miami Beach at a major hotel. Couldn't be happier for her. Uh, that is the one that generally comes to mind. And then just briefly, really in, in, in from a high level overview, just pairing emerging artists in a space with senior uh, experienced established artists and having the ability for them to interact daily, weekly, monthly, whenever turning being able to turn to one of them and say you know hey what do you think about this piece what do you think about this process is a lot different than being at home turning to a family member or a spouse or a partner and say hey honey what do you think about this and you know the partner might say oh that's great so uh it's really helped multiple artists now actually accelerate their practice accelerate their career um thinking about things like developing series of works and bodies of works, getting more experience and exposures to shows, calls to artists, grants, um, artist collectives, artist groups has been very rewarding and fulfilling for me and Andrew as, you know, arts advocates, community builders and placemakers. That's an amazing story. Pairing emerging mid-level and established act, um, artists is a wonderful idea from a learning aspect. Amen. So in terms of future expansion and development, what are the goals and aspirations for zero empty spaces? And are there specific regions or cities you're targeting for growth? Uh, every major metro market in the United States, eventually, hopefully, when we you know scale and get some investment beyond, we'll go international to... Uh, you know, well culture places, there's vacant space everywhere. We can only go places, understandably, where there are artists. Um, mm -hmm. On the short term, uh, immediate growth plans, we do, uh, we are building out an e-commerce solution for artists through our website, where we will give a platform for artists to sell digitally online. And there are a few uh, players in that space that are doing it, but the feedback we've received is that the those sites haven't really listened to the gripes or the feedback from the users, from the sellers regarding things like the shipping. And it really caters to um, certain, almost a few artists, the established blue chip artists. Uh, we want to kind of turn that model on its head and provide this opportunity for, once again, those emerging artists 
And then essentially every time we open a new location, uh, since we're pretty much going to be the only e-commerce site to sell art that also has physical brick and mortar locations, when we open new locations, we'll get SEO press, uh, SEO press hits and more discoverability that'll help all of the artists on the platform and all of the artists in the program get their profiles elevated to help them be discovered and collected. So the e-commerce is short term and then uh, that should be launching by the end of the year. We're working on that right now. And then um, we do want to start uh, acquiring uh, commercial real estate ourselves and establishing long-term permanent spaces. So there won't be a point in time when we get a notice to vacate because the space has been leased. Um, so we are beginning the processes of, you know, getting things lined up, you know, obviously it's, you know, capital inclusive. So we, we do, you know, probably need some support on the fundraising side and the financing side, understandably. Um, and then we want to establish, um, on top of that or align with that, we want to establish live workspaces because that's the one thing, especially as you know, living in South Florida, the cost of living, it's one mm -hmm. of the least affordable in the countries. Um, so we want to make spaces for artists to be able to create and reside. Um, and we hope through the growth and novelty uh, of the program and sticking to our mission and staying altruistic and authentic and genuine that that should gravitate some opportunities to us through things like the Live Local Act or, you know, some new models that we're looking at that should hopefully help us get in the game. So if you're a developer, you know a developer or you know a, uh, an investor um, that this sounds good to, you know, we're certainly glad to speak with them and um, certainly glad to, to get in the game. And we've seen as I outlined briefly with the Winwood example, we've seen the impact the arts has to not only revitalize communities and commercial real estate, but literally increase the value that a warehouse, my business partner used to chip in a hundred dollars a month to rent as a painting studio now sells for 40, $50 million. So yeah. that's, that's what's possible, but, and we don't want to displace anybody. We want to make them permanent art spaces, which we've also seen as possible. Just need to get the right, you know, partners and space lined up. Yeah. Is there a formal site selection process or do you just go wherever there's space available and people are willing? Uh, we only go the places we're invited and then we do go for a, uh, a site survey and then we have our criteria for site selection. Um, as I mentioned, ideally, as long as it's up to code, <laughs> working AC, um, you know, like I said, the, the fact that, that it's not um on high street is not part of the formula that's not going to like rule out a space um it's more you know does it have the bones of the space per se that allows for it to be successful but we will go for a site survey um and we have some calculations and some measurements that we like to do and you know see how many outlets there are to see you know how many outlets we might have to bring in with an electrician um, and stuff like that. And, you know, we'll, like I said, we'll improve a space, you know, up to a certain amount, but we can't, you know, if it doesn't have a bathroom, we can't add an ADA bathroom for yeah. $30,000. So we'll go and, and determine those things on a, on a site, uh, survey. And then that helps us with the site selection, um, with the spaces that are offered to us. Yeah. Can you share instances where the presence of your artist studios has not only attracted art enthusiasts, but also encouraged local residents to engage more actively with the arts? Sure. I mean, one of the coolest ones, the quickest one, we are in the largest mall in New England in the luxury wing where the Neiman Marcus closed. This is in the Natick Mall in Natick, Massachusetts with Brookfield. And um, essentially, you know, that mall was going in the you know wrong direction, understandably. And they put us in a former Burberry store um, next to Louis Vuitton for what we understand to be the first and only art studio in the world next to Louis Vuitton. So in that instance, it does help <laughs> with the 
the right traffic of luxury shoppers that have the ability to purchase art, members of the community discovering the artists keeping feet in the street in the shopping center longer there. Um, that one we, we, we find fascinating. Um, our first location on Las Olas, we had over a thousand people come out to the grand opening reception. Their people were spilling out into the streets. If it would have been just another gallery opening, it probably wouldn't have been received the same. But based off the novelty of the concept of these being local artists in the community, being able to invite their the general public, their family members, their friends, that brought in a, a new level of interest. And also because, you know, just the fact of the nature of the high price of commercial real estate on Las Olas um, obviously lent itself well to there being traditionally high priced art being sold in those galleries because these were local emerging mid career and established artists, their price points were more affordable or accessible. And when I talk about the win, win and win benefit on the third part of the community's ability to discover and collect and support artists in places that they never traditionally have been able to do so, we have artists that sell work for hundreds of dollars, so it allows and supports and enables uh, a p prospective collector or patron or supporter of the arts to get into collecting local art at a relatively affordable uh, price point versus you know the traditional thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars that you would have to spend to acquire our work on Las Olas. And then there's just been other great like collaborations with nonprofits, Chambers of Commerce uh, that that we allow to leverage the space for free to invite the general public in to utilize the space for a mixer or a meetup, a nonprofit fundraiser. Um, and the best one that we've had probably was uh, we partnered in our Palm Beach Gardens location with the Palm Beach Symphony, who who provided discarded instruments that weren't able to be played anymore. And the uh, artists were allowed or asked to embellish them with their artwork and their style to do a musical masterpiece fundraiser. And then we auction those off at the Kravitz center, which is this, you know, signature premier performing arts center in Palm beach County and West Palm, uh, at the opening season event in the lobby, uh, of a, you know, a hundred dollar ticket event, I believe it was. And 50% of the proceeds went back to supporting the symphony 50% of the proceeds went back to the artist. It received a lot of press coverage. And once again, it allowed the public to discover the artists and the artwork, not only in their studio, but then actually taking those, putting them in the Kravitz Center was a, a really cool, unique opportunity. So different ways to get the public to engage and discover the artists and the spaces uh, inside and outside the spaces as well. That's incredible. What's an example of a commercial real estate property that's benefited from partnering with you guys and incorporated studios into their leasing strategies? Uh, one that comes to mind in Palm Beach County was uh, the Mid at Lake Worth, which is an affiliate development uh, project. They built, uh, I believe it was 13 ground floor retail spaces with apartments up top on Dixie Highway on a stretch that really didn't have much retail uh, products or offerings. And we were the first tenant to be brought in as effectively as part of their, uh, you know, part of the activation as part of the leasing strategy. And effectively, they infilled all of the units around us to the point that we were effectively the last space to get filled by what would become a permanent tenant. Um, and it not only helped with the leasing activity of the, of the commercial real estate part on the retail side of things, but because there were apartments up top and also these were, you could consider them luxury apartments. They were definitely luxury for the area uh, in Lake Worth, which is traditionally um, you know, not a, a luxury market in Palm Beach County. Um, it actually helped, we feel, um, increase the value of the residential rental rates, which were actually pretty high for higher than what we anticipated. And it provided an amenity 
to the residents as well as the neighboring tenants. Once again, you know, you go to the local coffee shop or yoga studio or Pilates studio on this ground floor retail environment. And then you're looking in like, what's that art studio? Or, you know, if you go to that coffee shop every single day and you look in the window next door and you get to watch that piece of art transform, maybe you stop in and you ask the artist what they're working on today. How's it going? It really does provide a lot of placemaking benefits, connectivity to the community, sense of civic pride. And in this instance, to your question, uh, we feel it was a one of many successful success stories where that activation did support the leasing activity because if we if there was no tenants in there, you could sell the dream and try to sell the dream all you want. But when there's something in there, uh, we find a lot of developers find value in bringing us in uh, to kind of help show the vision and the future before those long-term tenants move in, which as you know, and as most people in commercial real estate know, you know, sometimes takes time, especially with new development. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I'm interested to go see your location in Palm Beach Gardens. How can people learn more about Zero Empty Spaces? You can follow us on social media at Zero Empty Spaces, uh, spelled out Z-E-R-O, Empty Spaces, website zeroemptyspaces.com. Got a lot of great content on YouTube. I do podcasts with the artists. Uh, we have open studio events. Most of our locations are every second Saturday of the month, generally from 12 to 5 p.m., which are our public hours. Some of the locations do a first Friday. Um, you can find all of the open studio events on our website. It's zeroemptyspaces.com. And um, if you ever have any questions, you can email us at info at zeroemptyspaces. If you'd like to, uh, maybe you don't want to purchase artwork, but you want artwork for your office for your lobby, for your house, for your yacht. We also have an art leasing option that you could pay a fractional uh, 3% a month of the value of the artwork rate on a three, six or 12 month basis. So you can have local artist artwork in your property um, with the ability to purchase it. And then proceeds are going back to local artists to support the creative economy. So we're very resourceful. Obviously we're very open-minded. I'm glad to collaborate, glad to support, glad to hear feedback, and glad to expand the program wherever we're wanted or welcome. So don't hesitate to reach out. We hope to see you at Palm Beach Gardens or at one of our other open studio spaces soon. Thank you. Thank you. That was great.